Hello, my name is Samantha Natal, and this semester I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Farrell, Olivia Huerta, and my fellow colleagues at St. Edwards University in the Psych Course 3438, Section 3, also known as Research Methods. This semester, we conducted two studies. The first study's goal was to determine whether or not there, was, there is a relationship between social media use and psychological well-being. More specifically, our research question was, how does active social media use and passive social media use relate to positive affect, negative affect, and life satisfaction? The purpose of this initial study was to fill the gap in the literature about psychological well-being and social media use. Our research team also found that the results should aim to educate the public about the relationship between their mental health and everyday use of social media. In order to gather this da data, our research team created a survey in Qualtrics that was either posted to social media pages or emailed to friends, family, and acquaintances. The final end was 455. These 455 participants were not incentivized to participate in the study or to complete the survey. The survey that, the survey that was sent included multiple surveys, and the first one was a social media use survey, which asked about passive and active social media use. We concluded that when engaging in passive social media use, the user lacks direct direct um, interaction with fellow users, such as scrolling through news feeds, um, posts of friends or followers, and other users' profiles, or simply checking for updates, notifications, and messages. However, when actively using social media, the participant either uploads photos, videos, and video, uh, photos, videos, and comments, or likes other people's posts. Any form, so basically any form of communication or in interaction with fellow users on the social media network will fall under this variable. Moreover, the Spain, scale, the Spain survey um, accounted for positive and negative emotion, and the satisfaction with life survey, scale survey, measured one satisfaction with life. Lastly, we included a demographics questionnaire that asked for biological sex, age, ethnicity, and English fluency. So, on to the results. As I said before, on our, our, our first study, we had 455 participants. The first correlation found was between active social media use and positive affect or emotion. There was a positive correlation that we found um, between the participants who reported being more active on social media also reported more positive emotions. The second significant finding from study one was a correlation with life satisfaction and passive social media usage. People who reported more passive social media use also reported being less satisfied with their life, according to the Satisfaction with Life Scale. Although these correlations were both important and significant, our research team and Dr. Farrell furthered our research on, the ma on this matter in study two. So, on study two. Uh, the purpose of study two was to build on the literature conducted in study one and also the research team worked towards providing results on any potential causalities found between social media use and its effect on psychological well-being. However, in this study, we asked for gender instead of biological sex. The research questions in the study war were, is there a main effect for social media use on psychological well-being? Does social media use interact with gender to affect psychological well-being? And does gender interact with social media use? So, on to the experimental design. We ended up with 130 participants to analyze. We ran a 2 by 3 between subjects ANOVA, and we found that there was a significant interaction between the, gender, between the gender and emotion conditions when related to active social media use. Those who identified as female were in, and were in the active social media use condition reported having more negative emotion than those who were in the passive social media use condition or no social media use condition. For a second significant finding, we see that males who were assigned to the active social media use condition reported to have less negative emotion or more positive emotions than those who were assigned to the, po the passive social media use condition or no social media use condition. And here is our graph. So 
In conclusion, these results can be deemed as can be deemed applicable to the everyday everyday users of social media. Our research team collaboratively aimed to provide data that can inform the public and social media users of everyday engagements on these platforms. We thank Dr. Farrell for providing the tools and guidance to produce this research, and I hope that my colleagues take this knowledge and work to continue their contribution in this field. Thank you.